Hello Fab fans, my name is Josh and welcome to episode 3. Before we get started, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that voted in the first this and that. Much bigger response than I was expecting and quite a tight race for a first go. But the winner at 17 to 12 is this. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to pull rank here and change tactics for this week. Just spent the last two days working on the door cards and it seems that the design I've chosen just isn't going to plan. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board on that, post that in a midweek video for you guys. But for now, we're going to take a look at that. So without further ado, we need to run the tape. This week, we'll be looking at the main differences between these two TIG welding machines and how the choice of a digital or analog set can impact on how easy they are to work with. Before we get to fiddling with these, what do the terms digital and analog actually refer to? With such a wide range of each machine type available, this can be quite confusing, but these terms simply describe how the machines process and deliver the output parameters that you decide on. In other words, both machines will do the same job, just in very slightly different ways. An analog machine will rely on a variety of rotary and push switches to allow the user to set the welding parameters. Whereas digital machines are generally controlled by a single rotary encoder and a selection of buttons to move between the machine's output options. This does make it much simpler to refine your settings on a digital machine and is easily the largest benefit of this type of input system. Now that we have seen how each machine can alter the welding parameters, what are those parameters and how do they affect our welding process? The first parameter we have is the welding current. Both machines here are capable of welding in alternating current or direct current. The main difference can be seen on the digital machine and its several choices of AC waveform, but we'll come back to that later. Next, we have the pre and post flow settings for our welding gas. This sets the length of time that the gas will run before and after the welding current is introduced. We now move on to the up and down slope parameters. These control the ramp up and down of amperage at either end of the welding process when using a torch switch. You may notice the analog machine hasn't got a dial for this setting and will simply deliver the amps you have set upon the arc forming. Also, when using a foot pedal on the digital machine, this setting cannot be altered, as the user has a full manual control with this. Another parameter the digital machine has, which the analog doesn't, is for the start and end amperage. These settings allow the user to fine tune how the amps are introduced and reduce the chances of crater cracks at the end of a weld. Again, with the machine set to use a foot pedal, the end amperage isn't a changeable value, as this is manually controlled by the user. With our start and end parameters covered, we need to set the working amperage. Both machines have a very similar operation with this, and the value will be shown visibly whilst the machine is working. You will notice the analog machine has a background current setting. This is a parameter for the pulsing function on the machine and will not affect the main welding current in normal operation. At this point, if you're only looking to work in DC, that's pretty much everything you'll need to play around with. But if you switch into AC, there are a few more settings involved. And this is where digital really starts to pull a gap on the analog. As AC welding switches between positive and negative polarity in its operation, we need some control over the length of time and frequency in which it does this. On the analog machine, we alter this simply via the cleaning switch. This controls the percentages of positive and negative current in the arc and has a large effect on both the finish of the weld and the tungsten's efficiency in the process. With the digital machine, we have a few more parameters available. The two main controls are AC frequency, 
which alters the number of times the machine switches between positive and negative over a given time period. And we have AC balance, which is the same as the analog machine's cleaning setting. On top of these, we also have a choice of waveforms, which can help massively in setting the machine to your own welding technique. Outside of the main TIG welding settings, both machines have the capability to be used for MMA or manual metal arc welding. Both also have the option of a pulse function where the user can set the welding amperage to rise and fall over a given time period. But I think we'll cover this in another video. So, those are all the basics covered. If you're watching this and still wondering which machine to go for, I would 100% recommend the digital set. They are simpler to set up, nicer to use, and when you've used both, you'll see just how much smoother these digital machines are. Now I know from the comments in the last video, a lot of you want to see my TIG settings, so I'll put them just here. But a word of warning, I would only use these as a base. If you're looking to improve your welding, it just takes time and practice. So when this video is over, turn this off, get into your garage and have a go. And that's it for this week's episode. My apologies again that it wasn't exactly what you guys chose, but it will come. And speaking of your choices, what have we got for this and that next week? We can either run through the build process of this aluminium header tank, or we can look for an answer for that old wives tale and decide if the angle grinder is a fabricator's friend or foe. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know your choices in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.